Hello beautiful people, my name is Zach Dowdy. Today we're gonna to be talking about bull skating. This is a master class on how to skate bulls. We're gonna be talking about everything from the beginner to intermediate level of skateboarding. Bulls are normally the neglected area of the skate park because they're just not as commonly available. You can't just have a bull in your backyard like you can flat ground or ledges. So this is gonna be the basics from beginner, having no experience to an intermediate level. When it comes to stretching, warming up before you actually get into the bowl, I normally just do a little bit of a leg stretch and that's it. Try to do bare minimum because I think stretching can be pretty counterproductive. Sometimes I do stretch actually after I'm skating more than before. You to do this one as well, where you just kind of kick that leg out. Again, you don't want to do too many warm ups before skating in general, I don't think. I like to just get my legs loose for the bowl so I get ready for pumping. One of the main differences in skating bowls versus like a mini ramp or any other kind of transitions, you have all this curvature, almost like a berm if you were on a bike, to sort of keep you in the bowl. And that can work to your advantage by using the pendulum technique. This technique helps so much when you're thinking about pumping or keeping speed in bowls. A pendulum is an object that's hung from a fixed point that swings back and forth under the action of gravity. And essentially, your head will act as the pendulum in this sort of thing. And your legs, your shoulders, and your hips are sort of the thing that is moving around. For example, this area, the deep end of the bowl, is really big. So I can almost use this flat ground and this here gutter right underneath me as my pendulum point. Like I wanna almost keep my head there and move it around. Now, this is like, can be taken out of context really quick. Obviously I'm moving around the whole thing, my head's not staying in one place, but ultimately the point that I'm trying to address is that you really wanna use your hips and shoulders to thrust it up onto the wall. And almost like the higher that you're getting onto vert, the higher the wall, the more inside and tucked in your head's gonna be because you almost wanna be shaped out with the point of the vertical motion on the ramp. So the point being is that like, when it starts to get vertical in the bowl, you yourself should be vertical as well so that you're sticking towards it and you're not falling off of it. The other thing that really helped me was the pumping big transition is trying to think about as slow motion versus small tight transition because I got used to smaller transition as most people do because it's a lot more comfortable and it's not as intimidating at first. You kind of got to think of this as slow motion. So everything you're doing is a lot slower. It's drawn out, it's more dramatic, where something on tighter transition, it's a lot quicker and you're having to react to the transition a lot faster. But essentially when it comes to pumping, you really want to use your hips. You want to use the pendulum technique. You want to use your shoulders and your knees to pump up and down the transition. That's sort of how it works. There's a lot of different ways you can dig more into this, but when you're younger, you can literally press on your knees. I remember doing that because I just didn't have the power. Eventually when you get sore, you almost have to do that as well because it helps. Just little things to think about. And if you're a heavier person, your pump is gonna be stronger because chances are you have more force coming in and out of that. So that also means if you're a heavier person going into it, means you have to embrace more to take in that impact so that you can pump out of it and use all that speed to your advantage. You almost wanna imagine that you're outlining all the transition with with your body weight and the shape of your body. So as you get more vertical, you're getting more sideways, you're getting more vertical. Essentially, you're drawing it all out. And that's really important. When you look at the wall, think about where you wanna go up, where your peak point of that pumping is gonna be, and when you're going down, where you're gonna be. So drawing that out allows you to sort of project your body sideways onto that wall, use your knees to pump through it, taking the impact as you come in and then pushing as you get out. For the smaller transition, imagine you're going up the side of this wall. Imagine you're not on a skateboard and you're just running. How would you run across it? Like, do you have these stairs, which really do help? You can put tape on the bowl. We'll get into that later as your markers, but having something like these stairs really does allow you to figure out the pump. Because the reality is without these stairs, you probably would be doing the same thing. But the point that I'm getting at is if you look at this little curvature right here in this bowl, you want to go sideways so that at this point, you're completely sideways, your body is sideways, and then you're pumping out of it. And you can really use this to get speed. You're almost taking the impact in when you get up and into the transition at the top, you're starting to slowly press all that out. And then by the end, you're really pumping out of it, pushing all the weight that you absorbed when you went in out of it so that you can get speed. Backside pumping and backside kick turns and carving normally do come a lot more natural because you can see where you're going. You're facing in front, where Front side, it's a lot harder because you don't know what's underneath you. It adds a little bit of intimidation and scare. So one thing I will say with that is that with front side, you're kind of more on your heels. You're healing it so that it gives you that same sort of pendulum technique where back side, you're kind of on your toes. You're more on your toe side. So that's a big difference is you're shifting your weight 
more on your heels when you're going front side, but your body, your upper body is pushing over it to kind of equal out that gravity. Something else that's pretty common is that I actually have my hands and my arms towards the side of me, kind of next to my hips and as I go up, putting my hands more in the air to give more of my top body weight more balance. And then as I go down, I'm putting, putting my hands back at my hips. And something I don't really think about subconsciously, but as I was just doing it, I was thinking about it. And I think that does help me sort of balance out so I don't fall head over. Something that you can do is imagine that there's like five inches of water at the bottom of the bowl and you have to carve around all that water. This is what we will form the scum line or known as the scum line. It's essentially when water evaporates from that area, you'd see a little line of residue. Point being is that like if you follow those lines where the water would be sitting on the bottom, a lot of times it's a really easy way to find speed without going really high on the wall. Once you figure out pumping and how to maintain your speed, the next step would be creating lines. And what that means is maybe going front side, then back side, and then going straight and fakey, something like that. So it's connecting those different little things that you do know within your ability to one another. So if you only know how to go front side and back side, that's what that would look like. Or maybe it's just adding a nose grab to the kick turn, something of that nature. So next, let's get into building lines in bowls. The big advantage to bowls is that normally there's not too much flat ground. As you see in this bowl, to hit the flat ground is sort of like a safe net, but the first thing I would say for keeping your speed in a bowl is remembering to stay on the wall. So you can almost shoot your board down this bowl and into any corner and you'll see how it goes up and starts to kind of go into another direction. And the point being is that it's always on a wall. It's never really in the flat ground. When it's in the flat ground, it's going towards a hip and hips are the next thing we'll talk about on how to keep your speed and how to start finding lines. For example, if I was going down into this bowl and I wanted to keep my speed, I wouldn't go straight up. Going straight up A is really scary and you're gonna lose a lot of momentum and a lot of your gravity. You're gonna start getting like kind of lightweighted at the top if you just went straight up and straight down. So the point I'm trying to address is you really do, for example, this bowl right here, we want to hit that hip and use that hip sort of as a mini pump and then pump again, sort of on the flat back wall that's curvature. And then you can use this hip again to make your way out of it. And this waterfall can also be used as a pump pump in a way. So waterfalls are normally a really good way to get your speed in there or you can absorb it. Like if you just didn't pump through this and then you pumped on the wall and then you pumped out, that's a good way to stop your speed from going out of the bowl there, but keeping it on the way out of the corner. What might really help explain this lines and pumping through bowls is actually having a shape drawn out and then tracing where you would actually go. So in this one, you would see how nowhere would you ever go to the flat bottom. You're always sort of hitting these edges and planning it out. Your speed is normally lost when you're hitting too much flat ground and you're just not pumping right and you're just not finding a good line. So your line has a lot to do with the amount of speed that you're able to maintain, keep, or lose. Typically a good sign for a good line is a line where you're actually getting more speed as you go and towards the end of it, you're almost having too much speed. You might need to get speed from the bigger area of this bowl to get speed in a small section, but that doesn't mean you need to go really high on the big area or pump it really big on the wall. Like I was saying, you could pump it really low and get just as much speed. As long as you're on the bowl and you're pumping some transition, you're still gonna get speed out of that versus just going in the flat area. Normally when I'm trying to formulate a line, I try to think of two or three tricks that I do know how to do pretty confidently, semi-comfortably, and then the last trick might be a trick that I'm not very comfortable with just to continue that process of falling, failing at something, and then knowing what happened every single time. So front side 5-0 in this deep end, and then a backsmith on this hip. That's kind of a challenging line for me, so I'm gonna try to put that together. A lot of what I try to think of when building lines is the direction. How is this gonna work? So I can think, okay, I wanna get this backside smith, and sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to reverse engineer it. Where is the last trick that you wanna land? Like, where do you know where you wanna be? Think about that, and then go backwards. So for me, I know I wanna backsmith this, so I'm gonna have the front side grind to a certain length over here, basically far enough to this wall where I could then pump this wall and then get right into this backsmith without losing any speed. So the point that I'm addressing is I really try to think it out and try to think about where the trick is that I'm trying to get to and then reverse engineer it.
the other thing you really have to think about when you're thinking about lines or how to build and formulate lines for keeping speed or just articulating multiple tricks, whether it be front side and back side, it's just the bull that you're in. So really the environment, this bull is gonna make my lines for me. I know I have to avoid the stairs, I have to go around them. So point being is like, if I wanna go back side around these stairs, I know I'm gonna have to go front side over there so that I can go over this little hip area backside so that I can go to the stairs. And that's what I would call reverse engineering. I'm gonna to try to attempt this line now, knowing that I gotta hit this front side at a pretty wide angle so that I can hug that wall, essentially. That's what I'm gonna do, try to stay up there as long as possible, and then I'm basically gonna come down. And the idea with this little hip right here is that I'm gonna stay on the side of it and sort of use this as a pump pump, if you will, to get into that corner, which you can't see because of where my camera angle is, but that's where the stairs are. So essentially, I'm gonna start right here, knowing that I'm going front side right into that wall. So. Even my starting point is really going to dictate where I end up at the very end. In this video, we've been going over some of the more practical tips of how to skate bowls, the fundamentals. I have made a video on dropping in and some of the more essentials before you even bowl skating. I'll leave a link up here above my head for that video. But the point that I'm getting at is this is more essential to specific bowl skating, not so much generic transition skating. I do have a lot of tutorials specifically to certain tricks, so make sure to check out that playlist. Please make sure you smash that subscribe button. If you're not already, smash that thumbs up button while you are at it. So the next thing that we're gonna get into is the top, the coping, the lift, how not to hang up, how to hang up, how to avoid hanging up, and just how to approach the lip of bulls and the coping of bulls, because I know it can be very intimidating if you're trying to learn new tricks or just trying tricks and you don't wanna hang up, so that's what we're gonna get into is the coping, the lip of the bull. Now, when it comes to skating pool coping, the main difference is that it just sticks out a little bit more than metal coping in this bowl. Particularly, it's not that big. It doesn't really stick out. A lot of the times, this whole, you know, sort of intimidation by pool coping is in your head. A lot of it is just a confidence thing because this coping is pretty similar to metal coping. So the nice part about locking into pool coping, even though it can be really hard once you get there, is that you can push your way out of it. Unlike metal coping where you kind of just fall in, there's not much pinch grab. And in here, you can really lock into that pool coping. So you can use that to your advantage by pushing out of it. So whether it be a 5-0, Smith grind, 50-50, front feeble, any trick really is that you use that back leverage, your back foot and that concave and you push out of it and you push it in front of you. So if you're doing a Smith grind, you can push it in front of you and then get on top of it. This is a good way to avoid hanging up because a lot of times when you're a 5-0 or whatever trick and you just want to go right in, you, do, you could do this where your board just gets caught up on that back axle and you're you're kind of done for. So in order to avoid that hang up, always try to push your board in front of you. Now as intimidating as pool coping really can be, the good advantage to it is that you can really lock in. So for example, even a 50-50, which is really hard to lock in on, on metal coping, probably the least lock in trick on any kind of transition, you can sort of cross lock it. There's different ways to really get in it. Getting out of it can be scary if you have that hang up factor. But for example, Smith grinds where you really need to kind of get that back truck on there and lock that back rail in there. You're able to actually find a much easier lock spot on pull coping versus something like metal coping. One of the common ways that people hang up on pull coping is they just don't go on their nose too much and they kind of just commit and then they hit that back truck. So whether that be on a backside disaster, um, a rock and roll and they hit their front truck or a 5-0 and they hang up, a lot of times that's just because your weight is off. Most of the time it's your weight is off and you're just not enough on that front side of the nose to lift over it. So for example, something like a disaster, you have all this area to clear. So as you can see, this is how you would be locked in, but your front truck needs to hit that transition and you almost need to go inverted actually to get over that coping and then you're able to put more weight back onto the back of your board. But the point is that common theme of hanging up is essentially having bad weight distribution. You're kind of already committed into the front, but you don't have that leverage already. So you need to be able to have that leverage. A lot of times it could be simple as getting up higher. If you get up higher, for example, I'm using a backside disaster, but this can apply to almost any trick on coping is that the closer you're up to your front wheels, closer you have contact to the actual transition so that easier to slide out of it. And that's the other thing, you can slide out of it. Going up 5-0 versus just dropping in like say you just went up and 
try to go in. It's a lot more of a hang-up factor where if you go up at an angle and you try to actually slide out of it a little bit, it's gonna be a lot more safe to get out and not hang up. I think the first tricks that you learn in bulls can be pretty subjective in my opinion. It really matters whether you're more comfortable with front side or back side. Then normally will dictate whether or not your first tricks are back side or front side slash grind. So that is normally one of the first tricks you do in a bull because slash grind is pretty close to the kick turn. So it kind of gets you, gets your confidence up. And I'm not gonna go too into detail on these specific tips because I do more specific videos about these tricks and how to do them. So this is more of a general kind of a beginner's guide, if you will. So when I think about like the first tricks that I would try in a bull, I think even a fakie rock is a good one. You're coming up fakie and hit the rock and go back and forward. And the point being there is that you kind of land in the rock to go back regular. And going back regular into a rock versus rock to fakie is a lot easier. So rock fakie is scary because you have to come back down backwards. In my opinion, that's a trick that you should learn later on because it's going to help with pivot fakie, 50-50 fakies, things like that. So this video, we're not going to go too into detail into those specific tricks, but I will say sort of like a checklist on beginner bowl tricks I would work on is front side slash backside rock and roll roll in and then pivots those are sort of like a good order and then from there you can sort of advance those tricks into other tricks like reverts and stuff like that but something i did want to get into is power slides on transitions. I see this question quite a lot. It's a really good question because power slides are a good way to build your confidence up and they're a really good way to sort of learn, catapult yourself to other tricks. If you have any specific tricks that you would like to see me cover and do a tutorial on, leave a comment down below, please, and I will try to do that. I'm actually gonna be doing a lot more individual tricks here soon and tutorials, going more into the nit and gritty and like everything about them like really spending a lot of time on each individual trick so let me know what kind of tricks you would like to see those video concepts around down below now getting comfortable with power slides in bulls is something that's definitely going to help your confidence and just kind of progress you in a whole nother chapter of skateboarding in bulls and that's kind of the purpose of this video is to sort of talk about these more beginner kind of things that will help you in all of skateboarding at any point in skating bulls so with power sliding in bulls it's a lot about shoving that back truck up above your front truck so essentially what we want to do is we want to just turn a little bit and push with our back foot get heavy footed and actually push that up and using our front we're kind of like pushing it the opposite way and then we're leveling it out the nice part about this is eventually you can kind of do this and push your back keep your front level out, even push it into like a little bit of a grind which is actually a nice easy way to get comfortable with the coping if you're intimidated by the idea of hanging up because you're really in the inside of the transition a lot of that right there I mean, it might look like a slap grind, but really it's just a power side. So a lot of it is about getting my shoulders, my upper body tucked in. So I'm like pushing it into the transition while I'm using my hip and sort of my butt and all that motion to press it up, kind of like flaring it out. Imagine you're doing like a, a tail whip in a car or something and all the throttles in the back and you're doing a burnout. Maybe you're doing a burnout motion in a car. Point of that being is like all the pressures in the back, the front's just churning it. So a similar thing, you're kind of just churning it in the front, with your front foot and your back is applying all that pressure so that it kind of just goes sideways, enough to the point where you go straight out. You don't wanna go two sideways and then fall back, which can happen when you're learning it, but the idea is you wanna to get to that point right here and then sort of let off that pressure and go forward. As a general rule of thumb, and I say this in almost every video, is that if you really wanna get motivated and you wanna learn new tricks and you're feeling like you're kind of in a routine of the tricks that you do do, maybe you skate a certain bowl and you do everything a certain way and you're kind of maxing out on your progression, the big thing, the big suggestion here is moving your location. Go to a different bowl, mix up your location, don't go to that same bowl, and then go back there after you skate some different stuff and you'll be really surprised on how that influences and how it changes your normal routine. So for the next thing, we're gonna talk about roll-ins because rolling on bowls are so crucial, so important for keeping your speed and just for having fun. It's nice to pop out of the bowl and be able to roll back in and just getting more confidence. That's one thing that roll-ins really do. They'll help you with their confidence and build up your line and pumping like everything else we already dived into. But before we go and start rolling right into this bowl, let's go over to a little bit smaller area so I can explain some context before we start rolling into some more steep transition. Talk about the difference. Good place to start with roll-ins is actually on a bank versus transition. The main thing with roll-ins that like really makes and breaks roll-ins is getting over that edge. But getting your wheels, front wheels over that edge and your back without being caught 
and then rolling in essentially because a lot of times what happens if you have not enough speed is a pretty common thing you get to here and then you kind of like have to roll over that in this situation it's not too bad which is why it's really good to start on a bank but in a pool you would hang up and just go down so eventually you do want to find a place where you can kind of go sideways with the transition and sort of fall and slope into it versus launching into it you're kind of monster trucking your way over the coping and into the transition the main challenge with doing roll-ins is getting the right amount of speed or just judging your speed because you need enough speed to get over that lip and have those wheels going over to where you're kind of rolling in at a nice even level but at the same time you don't want to go too fast to where you're just launching and then your acid dropping and you're clearing a lot of air and then landing because that's scary that's like alling into the transition which is kind of like an expert level trick so making sure you have enough speed just to where you're going to kind of roll over and go into the transition when i first started doing roll-ins i actually didn't go as sideways as i do now i went a little more direct a little more direct at it because when you're going more direct at it, you do have to be less precise. You don't have to know how to shift that body weight from being up and then being sideways, which is something you do need to learn over time. But the point, if you go more direct, you can go just at enough speed to where you kind of launch into it. You don't have to worry so much about having that carbon technique. However, the carbon technique does help when you start getting into big bulls so that you can avoid launching over all the vert. I definitely suggest getting comfortable with rolling in on some of the other areas at a ski park before you go straight into the bowl, whether it be a bank for your very initial roll in and then going to do some training and then getting to the point where you're comfortable rolling over normal metal coping and you get to pool coping. So if you've gotten to the point where you're comfortable, confident enough to try the roll in on pool coping, the first thing I would do is look for the most mellow area in the bowl. So this area in particular has the least amount of vert in this bowl and this coping is grinded down the most. So meaning there's less hang up factor around here and it's just not as intimidating to try it in this spot. So finding the right location in the bowl to do your rolling on, I think is gonna help a lot. So the one thing that I didn't mention yet, I'll get more into the technicalities is having your back foot on that tail enough to where you're almost manualing a little bit. At least with the pull coping, you're almost doing a little bit of a manual and then you're dropping in. And the big change here is that you're shifting your weight from being on top of the deck to then being inside of the deck. So it is a big kind of shift that has to happen and it will get you know, comfortable over time when you're doing other stuff. But the, the main difference is you almost have to think of it as you are dropping in. You're doing a slow motion drop in versus just starting from a dead stop. I actually, when I was younger, had a lot more confidence and more comfortability with rolling in than dropping in on a lot of things. And this is something I did everywhere I went. Every time I went to a different bull or backyard pool, I always rolled in. It was like almost my special meter. I got my special meter up, got my confidence up. So I always roll in, whether it be backside or front side. This is more of a general one. I'll make a more detailed video about rollings, but generally speaking, you want to have your tail, you want to have your foot just on that tail enough to kind of get you over that edge and then you're shifting all your body weight into it. So there's that split point from here to here. That's gradual though. It doesn't have to happen all at once. And that's why the more sideways you go at it, the more that you can gradually kind of make that transition where if you're going straight on like acid drop like this, you're probably less likely to hang up on the coping. However, you're catching more air and you're like launching into the bull, which is a lot of times gonna actually lose your speed. So kind of counterproductive for a roll. And so definitely going at an angle is gonna help you. I think front side or back side, it's gonna be a good advantage. And the other thing with just trying not to hang up is the more sideways you go, you're almost like grinding in. So there's less hang up factor actually, as scary as that can be. And it's something that happens over time. I think when you're first beginner trying to roll in on bulls, you're gonna go more at an angle to where you are launching, but you're not acid dropping, and uh, you can just shift that body weight in. The main difference there too, I will say, is you want to really absorb everything. So really sucking your knees up. From here, you're kind of standing, but as soon as you go into here, you're really absorbing everything. So like your knees are your suspension. Imagine you're a monster truck. I used that metaphor earlier. Like you're monster trucking over the coping into the bull. Imagine your legs are the monster truck suspension. So you have to absorb everything and then push out of it. 
the nice part about roll-ins are they could be such an extension they could be so fun eventually you could do 5-0 roll-ins 50-50 roll-ins that'll be it for a whole nother video but it really does open up a whole new level of progression the other thing that's really helped me with roll-ins particularly is actually popping out onto the deck and then rolling in quickly after it's almost a way to get your confidence up and your special meter up in it's less scary than going on the deck and rolling straight in. Similar to how like dropping in, just having your deck in drop in position, it's just adding more fear and anxiety by the moment. So it's kind of avoiding that sort of barrier and allowing yourself to kind of build into the roll in versus just being scared starting from that point. Now, in order to get really comfortable with the lip of any bull or steeper transition, I think a good rule of done is just popping out onto the deck. So a lot of times you're actually going face on with it kind of intimidating but you're almost lapping yourself over the point is that you kind of want to be able to just get comfortable with that vertical motion and then transferring up onto the deck i did ask you guys on instagram and on my youtube channel any questions that you might have for bull skating or a master class video like this one that i'm making so let's go through some of these questions i'll try to answer some that maybe i didn't already answer throughout this video i saw there were so many good questions that i'm actually thinking about making another video where i just do a how to skate transition q and a so i basically just answer every one of your questions by actually doing the trick and talking through it because i'm sure this video is already really long so let's just go through some of them make sure that I don't leave anything out and Aaron Winters actually asked a question that kind of made me think I need to make a whole video about it what he said is rolling in is one I'm not seeing here but I've also noticed no one really ever covers the piece between slash and stand-up grind my observation is experience is the progressing from one to another is a major step that's not as self-evident as it seems and I agree the difference between slash and frontside 5-0 is huge I've actually touched on it on this channel a few times with my friend Al. He learned slash grinds first. I actually learned stand-up 5-0s before I learned slash grinds. So I do wanna get into that. I think the major difference is where your body weight is. When you're doing a slash grind, you're kind of just committed to a kick turn. When you're doing a stand-up 5-0, you're more committed to the deck and you're almost on your back. There's a lot of different things. You can have your heel out to sort of give you a little more balance. So I'm gonna make a more in-depth video on that one because that deserves more attention than I can give it right now. I like to know your specific progress over the years. So the first trick I ever learned on transition was actually a tail block, really odd, kind of different. Most people learn slash grinds or things like that, but I learned tail block because I was more comfortable grabbing my nose when I was doing kick turn. And then eventually I was just kick turning high enough to where I could grab my nose and just all the tail block. So yeah. That's the same thing with front side 5 O's. I honestly think when you're doing front side 5 O's on something that's kind of scary that you're not used to, you can actually grab the nose and sort of a safety net. I've done it on like big transition, I'll grab my nose and sort of use it as a guide. So if you're really intimidated by the coping or doing slash something bigger than you're normally used to, try grabbing your nose. It gives you a little bit of leverage, a little bit of confidence. So many good questions. I wanna get into all of them. Like I said, I'm actually thinking about making a whole nother video because there are so many questions. That's just a Q and A of how to skate transition in bulls. And I'll go through every single question. So that's gonna be it for this one. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing if you're not already smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Uh, press it down if you thought it was <laughs> and we'll see you guys in the next one mash oh my goodness that was bad I should have fake rock my board just landed on top of my camera oh no all right, smash that like button so I can afford a new camera.